Hi, I'm Rami Tamimi. Today I'm going to show you how to survey using a drone. This right here is the DJI Phantom 4. It's one of the most popular drones used in the mapping industry. And this drone has the ability to do aerial mapping and using the data that we can extract from the images, we can then survey that information. Now aerial mapping has been around for nearly 100 years. It was first used in World War I when the Allies took airplanes and mounted high resolution cameras in order to infiltrate their enemy's territory. They would fly these planes with cameras pointed in an nadir position at 90 degrees in order to do aerial mapping on their enemy's land. This gave the Allies a huge advantage because they knew exactly where all the features for their enemy's lands were located using these aerial maps. Now, of course, since the early 1900s, the technology has advanced tremendously, and now we have drones. And these drones have high-resolution cameras that we can use to fly and take imagery. Now, a traditional aerial mapping is still very relevant. We still send pilots on airplanes carrying very very expensive high resolution cameras that are taking airborne imagery for us. The cost to operate a manned aircraft with a half a million dollar camera is extremely expensive. Not to mention the resources and the ability to find someone who's skilled enough to do it are very scarce. But now with drones, we have the ability to buy a drone as cheap as $1,000 and fly it in the air only a few hundred feet above the ground and capture extremely high resolution imagery and the images that are captured by this drone can be orthorectified and we can use it to do surveying in the office. And today I'm going to be showing you how you can use a normal consumer grade drone in order to perform aerial mapping missions for surveying. Now if you're interested in learning about surveying, aerial mapping, remote sensing, all this great technology, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel as I'll be releasing several videos talking about this great new advanced technology and how us surveyors can benefit from it and use it in a proper way. Now there are a lot of important things that you have to account for when you're doing aerial mapping. However, as surveyors, the most important, the top priority, the one thing that we care most about is accuracy. If the data looks pretty, but it's not accurate, then it's just a pretty picture. It's not a map. This is what gives aerial mapping a bad reputation. A lot of people don't fully understand how they can utilize aerial mapping by incorporating surveying practices in order to have accurate data. Now, there are a lot of methods that you can use in order to achieve a higher accuracy map. The most common and fundamental method would be the use of ground control points. As surveyors, we use total stations, levels, and GNSS receivers to collect data and to set high accuracy control points. So by incorporating these control points to aerial mapping, we're able to use something known as georeferencing to reference these control points to our data sets. These ground control points are set using targets, so we're able to observe the position of the points up in the sky. The science of combining aerial images with ground control points to produce high accuracy imagery is known as photogrammetry. Now today, we're going to be surveying this cul-de-sac using photogrammetry. We'll set several ground control points on this site and then georeference their coordinates to the imagery and generate an orthorectified map that we can then survey from. Here's a Google Earth image of the cul-de-sac so you have a better idea of what the parameters are that we're going to survey. Now, ground control points are also complemented with something known as checkpoints. Checkpoints are observed in the same way as ground control points are. However, they are not included in the solution. Checkpoints are not used to adjust the data that we capture from the drone. These points are only used to merely check our work and to make sure that the coordinates of the imagery lines up with the checkpoint without actually adjusting to the point. Now for this project, I'm going to be using a GNSS receiver to set five ground control points and two checkpoints. Now if you want to learn more about GNSS receivers, I've made a playlist with several videos talking about it. And make sure you check that out if you want to learn more about these receivers. Now when it comes to setting ground control points, you definitely want to spread them out as much as possible and put them on the exteriors of your project. Being that I only want to survey the right away of the cul-de-sac, I'll probably set one point over here, another point in the back, a point on the opposite side in the back, another point up front as well, and then one more ground control point in the center. I'll place one checkpoint on this side, one checkpoint on that side, and that will be my control network. For reference, here's a Google Earth image showing where I'll place the ground control points as well as the checkpoints. Now before we start, I want to thank our sponsor for today's video, E38 Surveys solutions. If you're looking to incorporate aerial mapping into your work, or if you have an existing aerial mapping company and you want to improve the accuracy, E38 Survey Solutions 
can step in and help you improve your existing business or help you start incorporating aerial mapping. They are the premier U.S. distributor for GNSS receivers and drones across the United States. They're based out of Ohio and carry IMLA GNSS receivers and DJI drones. If you want to learn more about E38 survey solutions, check out the link in the description and make sure you let them know that Rami sent you. All right. Let's get started. All right, I'm gonna place the first ground control point right here. All right, I'm gonna take my GNSS receiver and I'm gonna place the pole at the center of the target. Make sure this is plumb. All right, I have my job loaded up on my GNSS receiver and our output coordinate system is NAD83 Michigan South and our elevations will be NAVD88 using Ellipsoid 12B. I'll click add a point and I want my point number to be one, description, GCP. Save. My pole height is 6.56 feet, which is equivalent to two meters. I'm going to be averaging shots for 10 seconds. I wanna make sure my observation has a fixed solution. Okay, measure. All right, now we have coordinates of our first ground control point. All right, we'll go ahead and set the second control point here. Okay, measuring point number two. Looks good. Okay, and good. Point number three. Okay, point number four. Okay, good. And point number five, which I'm gonna be setting on the center of this island. And measure. Awesome, we've now set all of our ground control points. Now I'm gonna set point number six, which is our first checkpoint. Okay, and I'm gonna go and edit the description of point number six and change it to CHK, which stands for check. Done, save, measure. Okay, good. And we'll set the second checkpoint, point number seven, over here. Okay, and we are now measuring the point. Okay, great, we're all set. And there we go, we've now established our control network that we're going to be using for our aerial mapping project. And now it's finally time to set up the drone. Make sure you guys check out surveyshirts.com. We have a bunch of different designed survey shirts for you to pick out from. They come in a bunch of different colors and sizes. We do ship internationally, so make sure you check out surveyshirts.com and buy yourself a survey shirt. Now when it comes to drone mapping, every drone is a little different. Some of them like this one have obstacle avoidance so that it doesn't crash into any Anything. Some of them have a fixed camera that you can't take off. Other drones like the Matrice 300, you can change out the sensors. So you can put on a camera, a LiDAR sensor, a thermal sensor. You can even put multiple sensors on at the same time. Mine comes with this RTK enabled antenna, which I'll talk about in a future video. But I just want you to understand that in this video, I'm gonna be giving you the most general information that you can use in order to do aerial mapping with the most basic drone. Even drones that are under $1,000 can do what I'm going to show you. Now there are two methods in flying a drone. The first method is to manually operate it while setting a timed image interval, say every one second take an image, while you're flying the drone manually around your site. The second and more practical way is automated mission planning. Mission planning utilizes the drone's built-in GNSS receiver and by finding its location on Earth can fly in a pattern that you preset in the controller. So in essence, we would be setting the parameters and telling the drone what it needs to do on the controller and then it'll autonomously fly the mission for us and then return home. That's right, there's no need to manually fly the drone. It's all autonomous. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. Now, again, I'm flying a DJI Phantom 4. So if you're using a different brand, it might be a little bit different. So just follow along and try to understand the concept as best as possible. The first thing I like to do is take four cones and establish the home point from where my drone will take off. Now take the drone and set it in the middle of the cones. Now you're gonna wanna power on the drone. Next, 
Next, we're gonna be powering on the controller. Okay, the controller and the drone are communicating. All right, so now let's go over setting up this project and doing the mission planning. Now, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is click on plan, and you're going to be given a selection of different planning methods. Depending on the type of work you're going to do, you can select any of these options. So we're just going to do 2D photogrammetry. Now to the left, you'll have an aerial map of where you're at. If we zoom in here and we take a look, the red triangle is the drone, and the blue circle is the controller. Now before we can set the mission parameters, we need to define some settings for the drone and the camera. The first one is the flying height above ground level. It's automatically set to 100, but I'm going to change it to 25 meters. The speed of the drone is automatically set to 9 meters per second, which is fine. I'm going to keep the shooting mode at timed shooting, and after the mission is complete, I will have the drone return to home. The relative height in meters, I'm going to keep it set to zero because I want to maintain 25 feet above ground level. Under camera settings, I'm going to change the photo ratio to 4.3. The white balance, because it's a sunny day, I'll keep it set to sunny. I'll keep metering mode set to average, and I'll keep the gimbal angle set to 90 so that the camera is pointing straight down in nadir mode. Under advanced settings, I can adjust the horizontal overlap and the vertical overlap. I'm going to increase this to 80%, and that just means that there's going to be 80% overlap between each of the images taken. Margin settings, I'm going to manually set it to 5 meters, and that's just going to create mapping 5 meters outside of my set parameters. I'll click save, and now I'm going to define my project limits. I'm going to start here, go here, up here, and over here. Now you can see this yellow pattern, and that is going to be the pattern that the drone flies in. I can move these over if I want to create more mapping. So maybe we'll move that up there. Maybe maybe I can straighten this one out a little bit. Move this over just a tad. Okay, this looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and click save, and I'm going to name this mission Drone Job. Done. Confirm. Home point recorded. Okay, the home point has been recorded and everything looks good. So I'm gonna click on invoke. If we look in the top here, it says ready to go GNSS. And if we tap here, we get a live feed of our drone camera. All right, everything looks good. So now it's time to take off. Just need to slide to execute. Start operation. Home point recorded. There it is. There's the drone. Taking a look here, we can see the drone in its location on the map, where it is in the mission. We also have a live view of the drone and what it can see from above on its camera. We can also see that the mission is 64% complete and that we've taken 80 images so far. Return to home, RTH. Operation complete. And that's it. Taking a look at the screen here, we get some nice information. We cover 21,000 square feet, which is just under half an acre. The flight time was five minutes and 38 seconds. And we finish 100% of the project. I can hit confirm. And if we look here, this white path is the path that the drone took. And that is how you survey using a drone. Now, if you're interested in learning how to process this data, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on that bell notification because I'm going to be releasing so much content relating to drone mapping as it relates to surveying. We're going to be talking about data acquisition, data processing, managing data sets, doing post-processing work, and creating deliverables with survey grade accuracy. If you're into drone mapping and surveying, make sure you join our Facebook group and share pictures of your projects. I'd love to see all your surveying pictures while you're using drones. Thanks guys for watching and I will see you all next time.